Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course. So, let us continue our discussion on the applications of linear algebra and let us look at yet another interesting area of application and that is basically in graph theory and how it can be applied in a very important and interesting area that is social network. So, let us look at linear algebra and application in graph theory plus social networks all right right so this application graph theory can be used to analyze social networks also very interesting all right so very interesting applications of linear algebra in graph theory okay which can be used for the analysis of social networks consider for example consider the graph below i hope all of you know the meaning of a graph consider the graph below a graph is basically contains nodes and edges in particular we are looking at a directed graph which contains directed edges right so we are looking at this directed graph so we have these points p1 p2 p4 p5 all right so on p1 p2 so these are the four points which can represent for instance people in a social network right so you have this direct graph this can show for instance the relations we are going to see this so we have this directed graph and uh, so directed graph means basically you have the edge and edge is pointing from edge from node 1 node a to node b and the edge is pointing either in the direction of node a or node b and you can have in fact bidirectional edges also but here we are considering only a single direction for each edge okay for example this uh, so this is a directed graph all right because each edge because each edge has a direction and uh, this can represent for instance a social network right this can for instance directed graph this can represent a social network of connections for instance what we can say I am going to come to that right. Uh, so, for instance, uh, social network with uh, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, these represent the people. These represent the people and we have this directed edge for instance from P5 to P2, we have a directed edge. <coughs> there is we are talking about this edge if you go look up at this graph for instance from p5 to p2 we have this directed edge right and uh, now this can this directed edge can represent for instance uh, a relationship such as influence right so p5 influences p2 or p2 is following p5 right so depending on the notation so you can say p5 influences for instance Twitter right you can think of this as Twitter P5 influences P2 where P2 follows P5 right P2 follows P5 right so this is how 
the social network. So, this is the social context. Graphs are very important applications in modern social networks, right. So, you say and now to analyze this network one can build what is known as an adjacency matrix or a vertex matrix. One can build an adjacency matrix, adjacency matrix. Uh, this is the matrix M of size n cross n where n is the number of nodes. n equals the number of nodes ok. Where n equals the number of nodes and m i j equal to 1 if there is a node from p i to p j. m i j equal to 1 if there is a node from p i to p j oh, I am sorry if there is a directed edge I am sorry if there is a directed edge if there is a directed edge. So, if there is a directed edge from p i to p j or p i influences p j or p j follows p i right then we say uh, uh, p i j equal to 1 for in this case p 5 influences p 2. So, p 5 2 will be equal to 1, that is m 5 2 will be equal to 1 ok. So, we can build this adjacency matrix I will just go back to the figure for a moment to illustrate this adjacency matrix. So, we have the adjacency matrix for this, this can be built as follows for instance you have the directed. So, this corresponds to nodes 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5. So, you have the for instance from node 1 uh, let, let me also mark this for no, node 1 you have directed just to p 5 and p 3. So, these two will be 1 the rest of the entries. So, these two will be 1 the rest of the entries will be 0 ok. So, 0 0 1 0. from 2 you have directed edge to 4. So, this will be 1 rest of the entries will be 0 from 3 you have directed edges to 2 and 4. So, this will be of this form from 4 node 4 you have directed edges only to node 5. So, this will be of this form and from 5 you have directed edge to 2. So, this will be of this form all right and this is basically what we are calling as the adjacency matrix. This is essentially what we are calling as the adjacency matrix for this graph which basically is 1 if there is directed edge one if there is directed edge from p i to p j all right. So, this is basically the adjacent matrix for this graph. So, in this graph now we have the adjacency matrix matrix that is M and M raised to the power of R that is if you perform this product M into M into M. r time since it is a square matrix remember you can multiply it with itself. Notice that this is a square matrix. So, m into m into m r times this is m raised to the power of r. Now, if you take this matrix m raised to the power of r and look at the i comma jth element of this 
Now, this is the number of R step connections. This is the number of R step connections from uh, sorry from P i to P j in the graph right. So, basically this says or you can say a number of uh, paths of length r. So, you can say r step connections or this is also you can easily show that this is the number of paths this is the number of paths of length r from p i to p j right. So, this is something that is interesting that you can get. So, if you ask for instance what is the number of paths of length 2, what is the number of paths of length 3, these can be obtained from the uh, uh, from the respective powers of the adjacency matrix all right. For instance, let us take a simple example for instance m square let us take a look at for instance, we have m square, m square equals 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, you can calculate this and check this 0, 0, 0. 1 0 this is your m square and we can see these are basically your nodes 1 2 3 4 5 and nodes 1 2 3 4 5. Now, look at this entry the 1 comma 2 entry is 2 right. So, essentially if you look at this. So, if you look at the 1 comma 2 entry this is 2. So, m square of 1 comma 2 equal to 2 this implies what does this imply this implies that if you look at p 1 to p 2 there are 2 paths of length 2 2 paths this is basically your number of paths and this is basically the length right number of r length connection. So, two paths of length 2 from p 1 to p 2 this is basically p 1 this is basically p 2. So, that is essentially the anatomy of this. So, this says that there are there are two paths of length 2 from p 1 to p 2 and if you look at this that is you can easily see that you have p 1 to p 5 to p 2 this is one path of length 2 and then you have p 1 to p 3 to p 2 that is another path of length 2. So, these are you can you can easily see these are p 1 to p 5 to p 2 uh, p 1 to p 3 to p 2 right so from the graph you can see these are p1 to p5 to p2 and you can see p1 to p3 2 so these are the two paths of length 2 these are two paths of length equal to 2 ok. Now, m cube this is equal to 2 1 
this is your m cube and again now if you look at this entry let us look at this entry this is interesting so this is says m cube and if you look at the 1 comma 4th element that is equal to 2 this essentially implies there are 2 parts of length 3. So, remember this is the length and this is the number of parts. Two parts of length equal to 3 from two parts of length 3 from P1 to P4. So, you have P1 to P5 to P2 to P4 and you have P1 to P3 to P2 to P4. So, there are two parts of length 3. So, these are essentially your two parts. So, these are essentially your two parts of length 3 from P1 to P4 and you can also find similarly other such R step connections from P i to P j by looking at the i j th entry of m i j raised to the power of R. All right. So, let me just repeat that once again m i oh, I am sorry m uh, the matrix m raised to the power of r length i j uh, element i j this gives number of r step connections or r length paths in the graph from from p i to p j ok. Now, let us now look at another interesting application in the context of social networks. This is what we call as the a special kind of a graph which I am going to. So, we are going to look at an application of Look at, let us look at an application of graphs and therefore, linear algebra essentially in social networks. Now, let us consider a little bit a similar kind of a graph, but slightly modified. So, let us again look at our 5 points. So, we have P 1, P 2, P 3, P 4. Now, the only difference here is that this is a fully connected graph. We are going to make a fully connected graph. This is going to have some more edges in comparison to the previous one, right. So, there is ok. So, now you can see this is very similar, but uh, slightly modified. Now, this is what is known as a dominance directed graph, I will come to this. So, the, in this graph, if you look at any pair of points. So, between any pair of points in the above graph, P 
Ti comma Pj, there is either a directed edge there is either edge from Pi to Pj or Pj to Pi, but not but not both. But not both. So there is either an edge from Pi to Pj or Pj to Pi, but not both that is it is fully connected and there is a directed edge from Pi to Pj or Pj to Pi but not both this is known as a dominance directed graph alright. So, such a graph is known as a dominance directed graph ok. So, such a graph So, such a graph is basically this is basically known as a dominance directed graph right. So, there is an edge from P i to P j or P j to P i, but not both. Such a graph is known as a dominance directed graph that is there is an edge from P i to P j or Pj to Pi, but not both. Okay. So this is the, this thing. This is the dominance directed graph. Another name for this is also known as a tournament. this is also known as a tournament and uh, what happens in this and remember this is like a round robin right. So, we can say that P f P so P 5 uh, there is an arrow from P 5 to P 5 uh, to P 2 this implies that P 5 1 over P 2 right. So, or P 5 dominates P 2 that is the uh, there is the notion of dominance right. So, you can also think of this as a round robin tournament right the result of a result of a round robin tournament. The result of a round robin tournament because you have an edge between each uh, set of players i and j and if there is an edge from p i to p j then p i has 1 over p j and so on. Now, let us write. So, we have already seen this in the context of social networks. If there is an edge from P i to P j, this implies that P i influences P j or P j follows P i. or P j follows P i for instance here uh, you can say P 2 influences P 4 or P 4 follows P 2 right or P 1 influences P 2 and P 2 follows P 1 for instance P 1 influences P 2 or P 2 follows P 1. Okay. And uh, for instance, this can be an example such as Twitter, where uh, you have the different users who are connected. And uh, now, question is to find in this dominance directed graph. Now, given this such a dominance directed graph, right? Now, given this 
Twitter network or given this dominance directed graph, we want to find the most influential node in this dominance directed graph, right. So, given this dominance directed graph, the question we want to ask is which is the most influential node or which is the most influential person. which is the most influential node in this dominance directed graph. And to determine that what we do is it can be shown that you have to consider m plus m square where m is the adjacency matrix. Okay. We have the notion of the adjacency matrix, so write the adjacency matrix. and write m plus m square. Remember m gives the number of one length connections, m square gives the number of two length length two connections, right. And the vertex p i with, with, uh, 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 with the property that the row i has the largest sum is the most influential node. So, it can be shown that once you form m plus m square, you form the sum of each row, right. Now, the row i that has the maximum sum the corresponding vertex p i has the ha, is the most influential node all right so let us note this down so you find m plus m square the vertex p i with the property now in m plus m square form form sum of each row form sum of each row i vertex p i with the property vertex p i with the property rho i has the largest sum right with the vertex pi with the property rho as has is the most influential node this is a very important property is the most influential node that has the most influence in this uh, directed in this dominance directed graph that is the interesting aspect so that is so basically you have this twitter network or you have this social network in which or you have this tournament right in which you have these different players and each player has played with the other player and then one of the players has won there are no draws right and now after the results of this tournament you want to find out which of this which of the person is the dominant or influential player in this tournament right and similarly once you have a twitter network right where pi influences pj or pj is basically following pi right and you have directed it just between each node i and j that is either pi is influences pj or pj follows uh, and pj follows uh, basically which implies pj follows pi right and uh, and now you want to look at this network and you want to ask the question which is the most influential person in the network and the answer to that is you look at m plus m square form the sum along each row the ith row right the row that has the maximum sum, let us say the i throw has the maximum sum, the corresponding player p i the, or the corresponding person p i in the social network is the most influential person, right. So, to find that, to determine that, let us uh, write quickly write the adjacency matrix for this and this is not very difficult to write. What is the adjacency matrix for this? You have m equals, if you look at the adjacency matrix node 1 influences uh, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, it will have 1s in all these positions. Remember this is 1, 2, 3. Recall what is our recall what is our adjacency matrix m i j equal to 1 if p i influences p j that is there is a directed edge from p i to p j. 
no node 2 node 2 influences 4 and uh, that is it. So, this is going to be 0 0 0 1 0 node 3 influences node 2 and node 4. So, this is going to be 0 1 0 1 0 node 4 influences only node 5. So, this is going to be 0 0 0 1 and node 5 influences only no, node 2 as well as node 3. So, this is going to be 0 1 1 0 0. So, this is basically your adjacency matrix for this graph. So, this is the adjacency matrix now let us quickly compute m plus m square for this graph m plus m square for this graph is 0 3 2 3 2 triple 0 1 1 then you have 0 1 0 2 1 then you have 0 1 1 0 1 and then you have 0 2 1 2 0 and if you form the sum of each row the sum of each row this is equal to first row sum is equal to 10 correct second row sum equal to 2 third row sum equals 4 fourth row sum equals 3 fifth row sum equals 5 and this is basically you can see clearly row 1 has the maximum sum implies p 1 row 1 has the maximum sum therefore, p 1 is the dominant. So, all right. So, that is an interesting application of essentially graphs and linear algebra based on graph that is matrices constructed on graphs in uh, we can say graph theory as well as social networks. We have looked at a dominance directed graph, we have looked at the or, or and we have looked at the adjacency matrix of that and from the adjacency matrix m you compute m plus m square and from that you can find which is the most influential node in this network or which is the most influential person in this corresponding social network. So, that is a very interesting practical application and graph theory has a lot of applications in social networks and naturally linear algebra that is matrices based on graphs. Uh, 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 and in fact, matrix uh, uh, matrix theory and linear algebra of course, naturally therefore implies that it has a lot of applications in anal analyzing social networks like this example we have just seen. All right. So, let us stop this module here, we will continue in the next module. Thank you very much.